All right, here we've got a very heavy, not large package, uh, but a pretty heavy package of Estonian Parmapol. Now, the maker has been behind on his orders. He's had a lot of things going on in his life, so this has been a long awaited package, but Estonian Parmapol normally do not disappoint, so what we got in here. a huge amount of parmapol. Well, I don't need, this is a pretty large order of harps. This thing is solid harps. That's a lot of parmapol. Goodness, how many did I order? I don't even remember. I remember it was a, it was it was a substantial order for me. That is a lot of parm. A bunch of parm people. I don't even know if I'm gonna air this whole unboxing. This would be. This would be like an hour long unboxing perhaps. That's, uh, that's a lot of parm. Let's come back up here, look at this. Bunch of parm, bunch of parm. Is my mic even on? Probably, I don't know. I'm, if you've ever tuned in in the past, you know I'm not super organized. Let's see what one of these plays like here. We have the parm. This was one in, uh, looks like G. Shipped on the wooden block. That one's been bent slightly from shipping. We're going to put you right back where you need to be. We can put you right back. There it is. Yes. Melodic, clean bell ring. Once I got it re-back aligned, the reed was slightly pushed forward. It's important for a melodic instrument for there to be absolutely correct alignment all the way through across the deck. So we'll go ahead and we'll oil this one up. Put it back. So G2. Here's a big harp in G. I wonder what... Maybe that's a G1 or a G0. I'll be able to tell almost almost immediately if it's a G0. G0 are very, very low, so. That's a G0. G0 parm. Which I have a G0 that hangs on my wall. And they're a bit creepy because you got that super long sound wave that just whoop, 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 whoop. Most enjoyable. I lost my mind on it a couple nights in a row on Sunday night and on uh, and on Saturday as well. I got down on it. So always be sure to oil up the palm well because they will tarnish. They are steel. Another G. I'm betting G. Mm, yeah, so we won't play that one too much. That's good melodic tone. Parmapol are a melodic instrument, so I'm glad to be getting them back in stock because it's it's been a while. I've been sold out of them for quite a while. Uh, Parmapol had some stuff going on in his life, and the, the maker had some stuff going on in his life and in his shop, so... Good to know that he's back and making again. Let's see, here's a D. And they're all gonna be on this similar wood block with the pin and the piece of leather. I believe all of them have a round trigger. Yeah. 
They play good inward, good outward. I like the G zeros. I don't know if you'd want to play a harp like that outward because they are very, very thin reeded. But uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of people playing them outward, and they do play well, especially with the round, rounded trigger. It's a good design. Oh, an E2, Aaron Hamoki. Really enjoyed his E2, I believe. <laughs> Absolute fire, I like that. And they're well polished. They're not really decorated, but uh, the biggest thing about Parm is the sound that you get. Not that it's super highly decorated or comes with a really fancy case. They're just mainly about getting you a good, clean bell ring. You have a C2 that came off of its case. Let's make sure that it's still aligned properly. No, it's not. Hear the whoosh? This means my reed's sitting behind the deck, so I want to move that forward. I can do this. Come on now. Come back to me. Almost. We're almost there. Come on. We're almost there with a fraction of an inch. Yeah, the alignment of a harp has a lot to do with the sound, so glad that parm are easy to put back in. Into place would be a C2, I believe. Here's another probably G0. Nope, that's G1 right there. Like that. Yes, good fire. I like you, G2. I should keep a G2 or G1. Should keep, I got a G0. I should keep a G2 and a G1, but I've already got so many awesome harps. I want to keep the Parma pool available for everybody. So I try to keep only minimal Parm. There's a B. I bet this is a B1. I'm betting. And we are a line true. Very haunting. Pretty flexible read, not quite as flexible as like the G0 would be. The G0 is very, very papery thin. With a long sustain. This one has a pretty long sustain too. And for being as small as a harp as it is, they're pretty bassy. E. Try not to do the same ones. Is this an E2 or an E1? <laughs> hmm. E2. See if I can find some notes. I know I ordered some that I don't have spots on the website for. So hopefully this fall, this winter, I can get them up on the site. D, this is, I'm betting this is a D1. That catches the light nicely. I try to slow things down a little bit so I can get good thumbnails. Um, usually I'm moving the harp all over so it's hard to get a good clean thumbnail pick. Uh, 
Yep, that plays exactly how a Parm should play. Responsive, easy to play. They play relatively click-free. There is a bit of a relief at the ends where the, the decks flare out away from the uh, reed. It's right near your knee bend that you get the most side deflection on a reed because that's literally right the point that's, in, that's uh, absorbing a lot of the impact of you hitting it. So that's where you get the most side play. So a little bit of relief goes a long way on a harp. I like to do that on harps that I make as well. Let's see, what else should we have here? Geez, geez. There are just so many harps here. I ordered a lot of E2. Oh, here should be an A1. Let's see what you like, A1. Just the sustain just goes. Bell rings perfect. Yeah, Parm are very, very good instruments, in my opinion. Not the most fancy, not the most decorated, probably not the most rare of harps like some of other melodic instruments are, but harps that are all about the sound. Let's see what else we got here. Got ease, ease. Oh, an F, F2. But I'm Come here, F2. F2 is a favorite. I'm not huge into tuned harps all of the time because most of my play is solo, but F2 is a note that I really, really enjoy. I like that one. Oh, hello. The air conditioner is coming on. As we're on the tail, or the not the tail end of summer, more the beginning of fall. It's hot. It's cold. It's hot. It's cold. As it is in Kansas. What other notes do I have? G A sharp. I bet that's a... Oh, that's really... You can see that reed is really, really bent forward a long ways. That's... That read is actually deformed. Very, very creepy. I wonder if I can fix this. Oh, it's kind of bent like a banana. Come on. Oh, we're close there. Right there at the end. That is unfortunate. You can see the bend in it. Probably will not be selling this. Oh, there it is. There it is. Did I just take that bend out by hand? A lot of it is looking, seeing. There it is. So it just needs a little bit more work done to it. I think it's come back to us. There you go, that has it. I think, yeah, that bow is gone out of the reed. A little bit more play will uh, further straighten it as the spring steel, if it's pretty close to being straight, as it vibrates, it'll tend to want to straighten itself. Or so an engineer once told me, and I noticed it in harp reeds when they're brand, brand new, they will straighten a little bit. You'll have a slight curvature sometime after you get done grinding them. And after a little bit of play, that ends up coming right out. That wasn't an A1 sharp. I'm betting that was an A0 sharp. What else do we have here? D7. 
D A E. I think we may have played all the different tunings I got. A lot of different octaves, though. Yes, I think we've got them all. There's a lot of unplayed instruments here, but they're all of tunings we've already played. Anyways, I love y'all. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more Harpery. If there's any of these that I play that aren't yet on the website, you can shoot me a message at the Harpery on Facebook. I love y'all. Keep your arms clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. Harp out.